Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna be talking about is an intro to booth uh, three. And this is gonna be a very basics class. If there's only a few people, then we can, uh, you guys can ask whatever questions you want at the end and we can uh, kind of do whatever we want at the end. But we're gonna start off with just the basics, adding a printer, adding a camera, uh, adding your email and testing it. And then we're gonna go into um, some of the other menus, some of the simpler menus, look at those and some of the options there. And then we're gonna build a template and uh, install a, a template that I downloaded for free from darkroomtemplates.com. And then same thing for screens, build one, and then install a theme, um, which is a, a screen template with event settings. And then we'll move on to Q&A. So um, let's go ahead and jump right in. If uh, you run into any questions along the way, you can raise your hand um, and uh, we'll try to address them because there's not very many people in right now. Uh, we should be able to handle that pretty well. But uh, okay, so I've reset uh, my software as closely to the factory set settings as possible. Um, so, and I have just the sample beach theme selected. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my global settings and I am going to add my um, printer. So I have a, uh, a DNP DS40, it's a little bit older printer, but um, I'm gonna click DS40 and I'm gonna turn on the printer. If it gets too loud, just let me know uh, and I'll turn it back off, but just so you can see how it detects. So typically you would wanna turn on your printer before you start the software. This is already, this is after you've added the uh, the printer. Um, whenever the software starts, it goes and looks for any detected or connected printers. So it's impossible to do it on the first uh, setup because the printer's not enabled yet. But you can see that it's detecting that I have four by six media inside the printer and uh, it tells me a little bit about the printer. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, if I were using a Windows printer, then I would click Add Printer and scroll down to Windows and select that printer and then select it from my list of installed Windows printers. I'm gonna do uh, Snagit printer because that one gives us pretty instant feedback. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and disable it. Uh, so if this is too loud, we'll just switch over to the Snagit printer. And what that is, it's just a virtual printer that'll show a picture of what it took on my screen so you can see it rather than the ka-chunk, ka-chunk from the, the real uh, hard copy printer. Okay, so my printer is enabled and uh, connected and detected. I'm gonna switch over to my camera and it's uh, detecting the uh, webcam that I'm actually using for broadcast, I'm gonna turn on my digital SLR and you'll hear Windows see that I have a Canon uh, EOS 6D plugged in. I'm gonna refresh and it should recognize that camera. It will default to a digital SLR if it's connected. So um, if, uh, if you wanna use a webcam, you, you can, it's just whenever you have a DSLR connected, it's gonna default to it. So from here, uh, right now I have program, um, camera set and program, I could switch to manual. Those would be the two um, exposure modes that we would recommend. Manual is gonna be necessary if you're using external flashes. Um, so you have a hot shoe connected to the, let me get the camera so you guys can see. If you had a, hot shoe connected to your camera right here, connected to the flashes, then you would set your camera to manual. We don't recommend automatic or any other priority modes or uh, the specialty modes. Um, just program, which is P, and manual, which is M. Okay, so it looks like I have exposure compensation 
uh, switch to negative third of stop. Um, we'll leave it there and see what happens. It, uh, and if we need to adjust that, we can, if we're underexposing or overexposing, we can still adjust uh, the exposure compensation. Um, so that is the camera. So next thing we wanna do is test. And it says, press the space bar to start. We'll go ahead and do that. Oh, it's shooting at a closet, let me, sorry guys. Am I on autofocus? Yeah. I should have planned ahead and got a, uh, set up a tripod. And it is printing. And because it's a directly supported printer, it automatically knew to cut. Even though there's four by six uh, paper in there, I didn't have to turn on any cut guides. Um, so now that we know that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and just for sound quality, turn off that printer and exit. Okay. So from here on, I'm going to just switch over to my Windows printer. And if we look at these images, we can see that they're just a little underexposed, and that's because of that. Um, negative a third of a stop. So that should adjust it and it brighten up the image just a little bit. Or if I wanted to switch to manual, I can go and put manual settings in there. I have somebody raising their hand. Did you have a question? Yes, I do. Okay. I am. I, I'm. I'm a little behind. I'm still trying to add my camera. Is there any way that you could just back up just a little, just to so I can add my camera? The, um, what we'll do is we'll continue working. This will be recorded um, and put on YouTube so that you can uh, go through it uh, again. Um, but it, I, what I would do rather than try to work along with me is uh, just kind of follow it and then watch it again if you, if you want to work along uh, at the same time. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is switch back to our output menu. And uh, right now, all we're doing is printing a, um, a, a two by six strips. It's a good idea to also save a backup copy um, and your originals. So we'll check those two options and let's just, I'm gonna create a folder right here. And um, what we'll do is just save both the originals and the copies. see full size and then same thing for the originals okay and when we run through another event it'll output the images or the files that you see from here 
So if you run into an event and you forget to check those options, you can still um, uh, go to this area and save them um, by doing copy and burn, select the uh, files and then copy and burn. Um, but this option right here, Penny, can you close the door, please? Go that way. Thank you. That was my daughter. Okay. How do you fix camera blurriness? So there's a couple different things that can be going on with blurriness. Typically, that uh, I'm reading the question. Um, that is uh, a slower shutter speed. So switch into manual settings and then. Um, let me switch to manual so you can see this. Okay, so I have my camera set at 1 60th of a second. And from my photography classes in college, uh, what we were told was always set your, your shutter speed uh, faster than um, the length of your camera if you're hand holding. In this situation, it's not the case. Um, but I have a 24 millimeter lens, so I can probably set it at a 50th, somewhere in here. If I start going too low, let's try one eighth of a second, and I'm gonna probably overexpose this image a little bit. But um, now whenever it takes a picture because it's an eighth of a second rather than a 50th of a second, one 50th, uh, it's a much, it's open much longer. So let's see. When I, as I move, it should capture movement. You can see how I'm a little bit blurry there. So with a faster shutter speed, and if you're using program, your shutter speed is directly related to the amount of light you're getting. So it's gonna adjust. Increasing your ISO will allow it to have a faster shutter speed or adding more light. Um, so if I go, let's say, one 200th of a second, I'm gonna adjust my aperture. Now when I move, it should capture a, once again, it might be underexposed or overexposed. It should capture that movement just a little bit more. So you can see it's a little bit crisper of an image. So that gets a little bit into photography, um, searching online through YouTube um, into an ex a search for exposure triangle will really help get some of the camera basics down. Um, the, the triangle is your, your shutter speed, your ISO, and your aperture. Aperture is how much light is allowed in through a hole, how big is the hole. The shutter speed is this length that the shutter is open and your ISO is the sensitivity of the, what used to be film, but the, the sensor. Um, okay, so um, we'll get back to, um, I guess if, if I had let it continue, it would have output these images, but didn't, it didn't actually finalize that session. But um, the, Next thing I want to do is add in my, I'm going back to global settings. I'm going to add an email account and it's going to be a Gmail account. Um, so this is the name that shows up. Um, this is my email address, my password. And I'm gonna put in a description just so I know what I'm selecting. And I'll show you where that description comes in in just a second. And I'm gonna click test. So most of you will get a failed message the very first time you do this. 
if you log into your Gmail account, let me pull uh, mine over. Under security, there's an option right down here, less secure apps access, and that needs to be set on. Um, if you have two-step verification um, right here, this would need to be set off in order to turn on less secure apps access. So, um, and this is the same with Yahoo Mail, I think Hotmail, and uh, probably Outlook. Uh, most, most of these um, services have now this uh, option for to allow less secure apps access. So, um, you wanna make sure less secure apps is turned on. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now when we switch back to our settings. So global settings is where all the, uh, just kind of the master settings are all stored, ones that apply to every event. And then settings over here apply specifically to each one of these um, events right here. Um, so we'll click on output. Anything I change here is not gonna affect any one of these events. So we'll go ahead and check um, photo email one. And you can see this is where the description comes in. If I had multiple emails, let's say I had um, uh, my personal for testing, and then I also had my one that I used for weddings, and then I had another one that I used for corporate, um, I'd be able to select the different email accounts here. And then if I wanted to change the message that goes with the email, this is where it would be. And you can also add HTML, but that's for a different day. Um, and I'm leaving the, the size set to um, uh, to preview, but you can adjust the size to full. Um, we have another question asking about um, overly dark photos, how do you avoid overly dark photos? ISO is really gonna probably be the way, uh, the thing to look at. If your ISO is set at like 100 or 200, maybe try 18 or uh, 800 or 1600, whatever you have, double it and see if that helps. It should, whenever you double the ISO, it's going to uh, give you twice as much light. So if it's really dark, go from 400 to 1600 or even 3200. Once you start getting past that, you can get uh, run into a little bit of grain, but uh, increasing the sensitivity or adding more light. Um, so uh, rather than just raising your ISO, opening your shutter as, as much as you can and opening your aperture, adding a flash or uh, additional constant lights will help. Okay, so um, just for to help speed it along, I'm gonna set it to a single image and I'm gonna start the booth again. Uh, let's see why it's not letting me, why I'm getting the error. So my Snagit printer is set up for eight by 10. Let's just change that to four by six. It, this is a lot easier to do with a virtual printer because it's not actually creating a real print size that you have to match up with anything. Uh, let's see, let's see if that error goes away. Okay, so we'll hit the space bar again. And, oops. So one of the things that's happening there is that the, the shutter or the, the mirror flips into place, and this is something that you'll you'll run into as well. The flip, uh, the mirror flips out of out of place, and then the shutter actually takes the picture. So that, that's what those uh, multiple clicks are. Um,
Okay. So uh, what we'll do, typically you would just check your email and make sure that that's working. We can see right here that we have our original image and our template with a single image because I set it to only take one picture instead of the three or four to uh, just for time's sake. But uh, you check your email, make sure that's going through. You can also check your output queue to see if you have anything pending here. Um, if the email wasn't set up properly, you would have a job uh, that's kind of stuck there. So you want to make sure whatever you set up here that you know it is set up properly in global settings or um, let's say you set, set this to go to a flash drive that was drive G and then when you go to the event, you plug in the flash drive into drive F, um, that would cause some issues where it wouldn't be able to complete. So um, making sure every one of these has a pathway to do what you've asked it to do is really, really important. Um, if you run into an issue where you get crashes or something's not happening right, uncheck everything and test each one individually and see if, uh, that issue goes away. And then eventually one of them will pop back up and then you know where the problem is and you know a little bit easier where to look. And a lot of times it's because you've added um, a, a special character like that um, or uh, apostrophes, those type of things you don't wanna have inside of a folder path or a file name. But uh, that's a, a good way to diagnose and find out where the issue is because uh, it's hard to find out what the issue is unless you know where it is. So um, next on our list, we are going to go to our, and we're going to come back here and play around with these. This, this is the fun part, the templates. But uh, we're going to move to controls. Um, so I have... Um, when we started, we'll start it up just so we can see. It says press spacebar to begin. It's actually set to uh, accept a left mouse button click to start, which would also be uh, if you were to touch the screen. So um, in a little bit, we're going to go ahead and change that text to touch this, touch the screen to start. Um, the uh, I'm going to also set an exit so I don't have to click my keyboard but I'm gonna set my top left uh, corner of my screen right over here to be an exit. Um, now, because I'm using a mouse and not a touch screen, I'm gonna go ahead and unhide my mouse. So um, now I should be able to see my cursor. If I click right over here, it exits, so that's working. We'll start it again. If I touch anywhere else on the screen, it should start. So left mouse click or the if I had a touch screen um, would start the session. Here we have um, the keyboard shortcuts that you can use. So if for some reason it switches to black and white um, and uh, you don't know, uh, you want to switch back to color or if you want to switch to black and white, you can use these keyboard shortcuts to See, now I'm in black and white. Control C, back to color. Okay. okay. So this is just to kind of look at and see what your options are. If you want to reprint Control R, um, you can also use a wireless mouse um, and set your right mouse button to be a reprint. So rather than giving the option on the screen to have a reprint button, you can set um, reprint last. And so whenever you need a reprint, you just pull your mouse out of your pocket and hit the right button and it would reprint. 
So this is just kind of fun to look at and see what other options you have, like a QR code to start. Um, but we'll save. I just wanted to kind of give you an intro into this area. It's pretty neat what you can do here. Um, we're going to go over to our text menu next. So we had it say, press the space bar to start. Now it says touch the screen to start. And this text right here, we'll talk about in just a minute, how do you change what it looks like? That's gonna be when we get into the screen template. So I know a few people will probably have that question. Um, I'll show you how to do that. There's a couple, two different ways to do it. Um, but this is where you would change the, the dynamic text, what comes up throughout the session. Uh, you just type over what we've put in there. And also, if you're concerned that you're going to uh, do something wrong, it's not a bad idea to, this is, this is where all the, each event is stored. Um, if you go right here, you can create a new event and it's going to make a duplicate of the one that you have. So it's not a bad idea to uh, just duplicate that event or you can call it sample beach theme two. Um, by clicking this option or sample beach theme one. So it'll, uh, both of those pretty much do the same thing. The difference is it keeps the name or it doesn't. Uh, but the idea is that you start building um, your own event style and it kind of starts to remember every time you create a new event, it's using the same settings that you used in the last one that you just had selected. So after a while, they'll all be using the same settings. Now, if you run into an issue where there's uh, maybe a bad file in an event and you create a new one, well, that bad file is now in that new event. So um, that that is something to keep in mind that it, when you create a new event, it's gonna duplicate those same settings to the new event. And in, uh, in three minutes, if you guys want to start thinking about it, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll give you an option to break for questions or go back over anything before we get into um, the, uh, the templates. Okay. So um, here's your prompt for copies. So if you want to prompt uh, for copies, uh, you can enable that so you don't have to do the mouse or um, it'll just ask each person what uh, whether they want copies or not. And then we have a whole bunch of other options down here that you can also turn on um, if you want to review. Um, we'll go ahead and enable that. And uh, let's, let's just go ahead and turn those two on so we can see what's happening here. Well, I set the prompt for the beginning. Typically, you'd want that at the end, but. So it's going to take a photo, and it's going to show us what we're going to get. Um, because we have review turned on, and we can also uh, draw on it. And uh, if we click reset, it's going to reset those settings. If we click cancel, it's going to cancel the event or cancel the session. So that's a way to cancel printing if you want to give them the option. And then I'm going to switch over to timing. So if, if it's not paced the way that you want, you can adjust this. Um, it's a good idea not to go down to zero on anything because a lot of times that's a placeholder for something to happen and when you set it at zero then whatever is supposed to happen during that uh, won't work so i would go minimum of one on um, anything if you want to drop it down to near zero um but your countdown timer um how, how much time you have in between photos if you set this to a minute 
you can actually add a button that says take photo, which will bypass that. So if you have people that like to change um, different props, you can set it for an extended period of time. And then when they're ready, they click the button that says, you can have it say whatever you want. And once again, we'll get into that in just a moment with the screen templates, but the, uh, it would say I'm ready. And then it would bypass the in-between photos and go into the countdown timer. So um, does anybody have any questions before we get into templates? Uh, we're gonna do print templates and then screen templates. Okay, once again, the, uh, the video, the, what we're recording right now will be available on YouTube probably maybe the end of the day today, maybe tomorrow. Um, so you can go back through and watch it, pause it, and, and uh, get the full experience uh, again. Okay. So I am going to jump into... Uh, print templates. So we're back in our output menu and settings and we're going to click on choose and let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit better. Um, so software comes with a whole bunch of templates. Um, the little boxes in there are just contact information for uh, some of the designers. You can either move it to the back of the template or delete it, but I just wanted to make sure that if you want to get additional designs that are similar, you could. Um, we're going to create a um, template from scratch. Let's see. So I'm going to click. I have a little menu at the top of my screen that I don't think you guys can see. That's why I had to move it just to get to this uh, option and I'll make it bigger again in just a second. Yeah, okay. Um, demo to Vertical resolution, uh, 300 DPI, that's kind of all standard. So most of these settings, um, the description, page size, orientation are the three that I'd pay attention to. Um, okay, so we are gonna make a, uh, let's say a three photo template and you can see this, the proportions of the square is actually matching up pretty well. But let's say, oops. <clears throat> let's say I had a different size. I'm gonna switch it to four by six, which um, around 35 millimeter size. Um, this is gonna be a much longer or wider uh, proportion. So you can see how that that really doesn't work out too well there. Um, I would want to have in that case four photos, but you can adjust the proportions here under the aspect ratio so that you get something that fits in and that you still have enough space in the footer um, to add a logo. Uh, let's, let's go with eight by 10 aspect ratio. And that's not a size, that is a, a shape. So um, eight by 10 is a, a little bit more square of a, uh, a shape. So it should start filling in that space a little bit better. Okay. And then let's see, um, I'm gonna add some artwork. Um, Let me see, I might have some uh, backgrounds on my desktop. Oh, okay. So 
So we're going to add um, a darkroom logo. Which file did I get? Okay, so I added a PNG, and we'll we're going to see a little bit about PN, how PNGs work. This one, um, you can see that it's a graphic, but it's cut out. It's not a square. Um, if it were a JPEG, it would be a white background. So this will allow us to put objects over the top, make it a little bit smaller. And if you give me just a second, I am going to find some sort of background. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to, I just had to find out where I saved them. Uh, I'm gonna go to my desktop or I'm gonna go to my pictures, background, and we'll use this guy. So even though the portions, really it's a good idea to crop your images, so they match up um, and that you're not using a big giant picture. This is actually a, a pretty high resolution image that I'm only using a small sliver of, um, but uh, just for demonstration purposes. So the issue that you run into here is that um, this graphic is gonna slow things down because it's, one, it's high resolution and it's way out here um, and not being used. Um, so. I would crop graphics down to the appropriate size um, just to optimize speed. Um, another thing I accidentally did was I accidentally clicked and moved this out of the way. So I know it's not centered right now. Um, I'm going to right click, center, and I'll do both. And then I'm using my arrow keys to nudge it into place. Um, Another option you have is uh, you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to enlarge. And let's double click here, go to options, and we'll draw a, uh, we'll draw a four pixel white frame. So, um, that's kind of a, a basic template. The we talked a little bit about PNGs and they how they can go over on top of objects, and you can see through them versus a JPEG. We added here. It is a, a flattened graphic that you can't see through. If I uh, if I wanted to, let's say, do cloud shapes in this graphic, I could take it into Photoshop and then cut out a cloud, and then I would be able to see through to the composite behind it. Um, but I would have to save it as a, a, a PNG. So um, whenever you see graphics that go over, like let's say leaves or vines that uh, go over objects, those are all PNG graphics and they're using it as an overlay. So um, we're going to go ahead and click um, let me see, is there anything else? Oh, we'll add text. Um, 2021, if I wanted to um, add additional fonts, you would add them to Windows and then restart Darkroom and they should show up. Um, so the fonts are added to Windows and we're just looking at what's installed in Windows. And I got, I have an, a question. Do you have issues with camera and photo ratios? Um, the, um, the camera is gonna shoot in a four by six aspect ratio. So as a, um, we'll go ahead and save this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um,
but we know this square is an eight by 10 aspect ratio. So when we create our screen template, we'll want the live view to match whatever output ratio um, we're using. And in just a second, I'll create a screen using that same design. Where, where did I save it? Demo something, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, and saying it doesn't match. Do you want to adjust? We'll go ahead and I'm going to say no because I still want to only take one photo just so it doesn't take too long. Um, so the screen right here, I'll just show you real quick. If you want to match the actual output image that you have, you just make sure the proportions are the same. Um, you can go into the proportions and um, just type in 800 by 1,000. We know that's 8 by 10, which should match up. And then size it down just a little bit so that those ratios match. Now, this one won't. It, it's You're going to see the live view. The camera takes a picture that's outside these areas. So you want to make sure that these also have um, the same ratio. And when we talk about ratios, we're talking about the shape of the square, how, of, the, of the rectangle. How long is it? How short is it? Um, it uh, so if we are doing a square output, this would be a square, this would be a square. Everything that the customer sees is a square. The image that the camera sees will not be a square, but they never, they don't actually see that when they're um, seeing the live view. I have another question. Is there a way to change the fill color of empty photo shapes? Green template. Um, Bill color, empty fish. So if you're asking, are you able to change the actual color when you're working? Um, no, you can use sample images. Um, if you if you want to send them to, like if you want to send uh, a sample to a customer, um, let's switch back over to our So if we save a sample, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. It will replace the images, the squares with the pictures of people. And you can go into your X drive and replace those images with your own images. So if you didn't want to be people, you wanted to be, you know, a silhouette, you can do that. Um, the, um, now, the, um, I'm gonna show you one more thing because I don't, I, I, I'm not sure that I completely understand the question. So I wanna show you uh, um, another option. You have, uh, because just because you brought shape, um, you can change, also change the, the shape of the, um, using a predefined mask. I hope that answers the question. So, and then you can also, if you want to use your own custom predefined masks, um, uh, software comes with quite a few, but if you have ones that you, uh, do you like from Photoshop? Now, I wouldn't use anything that has gray in it um, with a predefined mask. It's good, best to stick with um, black and white. So um, we'll go ahead and cancel that. Next, I want to show you how to add um, a template.
So uh, at darkroomtemplates.com, we have templates that you can purchase. Uh, there's also some free ones. Uh, I'm going to be installing one of the free ones. Um, see if I can find that guy right here. So I uh, downloaded it from that website. I'm going to go ahead and each extract it. Um, to my desktop. Okay, well, there it is. Um, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna do, do this one as well. And I'll show you what that, that's a screen template in just a moment. So, um, so at this point you can click add and then you can browse to that uh, folder. Oops. And then select the different templates. So we'll go ahead and select this one and click Add Selected. Um, you can also go to your X drive. This is a different way to do the exact same thing. Um, and just drag these all into, and it's gonna replace one because I just added it. Um, you just drag them into this, uh, this folder, booth templates, and uh, that's where your print templates are stored. So now when we click cancel, no, and choose, we should have a whole bunch of baby elephant templates. So that is how you would add a template that you've purchased that is an XBDR. If you have a PNG or a PSD, there is a guide at Darkroom. Let me pull up our web page again. Uh, darkroomsupport.com and uh, PNG. Let's do a search for PNG. How do I add a PSD or a PNG graphic? This will walk you through the process if you bought a PSD from a, uh, another vendor. Um, so darkroomsupport.com and you just keyword search whatever you think you're looking for. If you're curious on setting up Gmail, type in Gmail. Um, we, we do our best to keyword uh, those articles as uh, best we can. So um, now that we've We'll go ahead and switch to, to three photos. That error message is just saying that I have, uh, I had it set to one photo, but there's three photos on this template. Do I want to change it? So we are going to go into um, our screens. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to first edit this one and talk a little bit about some of the options that we have. So when we start it, we have this blue text that says, touch the screen to start. Let's say we didn't want it to be blue. We wanted it to be uh, white with uh, an outline around it and an aerial black. So now, um, the text is going to show up right here. We have this uh, this placeholder text. Um, let's say our countdown. We want it to be real big, and fifty percent of uh, opacity. So we'll make this just a little bit bigger. The whole word doesn't have to fit in there because it just has to fit a single number. So now if we Start it up, touch the screen to start is now in white with black outline. We start it, the countdown should be 50%. Kind of hard to see, you can kind of see it right there. Um, so that is how you edit that dynamic text that shows up in the text menu. Um, if you wanted the get ready text to be in a different area, 
um, you can add a text object, insert special text, and whenever you add a specific text like the countdown, it takes it from this general text, which is meant for uh, all fields. It won't show up there and it'll only show up in this new area. Um, so this one covers all of it versus these are very specific for a uh, uh, very specific state um, in the text. So um, we'll go ahead and delete that. Let's uh, create a new template to match our other template. So we're gonna click choose new demo screen and I'm gonna use my current resolution. The background color doesn't matter and text color really doesn't matter because we're gonna add our own text. Um, add artwork, browse, and I think it was in my pictures. So we'll enlarge it just a little bit to match up with the, uh, the screen. We're gonna add our live view. And uh, it's funny, if you don't add a live view, it'll automatically go to uh, the next image um, in your, uh, your preview images. So it will automatically create a live view if there's not one available. Um, so there's our live view. Uh, we're doing aspect ratio eight by 10. Oops. Three, one. So in these boxes that are way outside of the area, it just makes it a little bit easier to stay organized by you know shrinking them down so they fit what you're working in. The live view needs to, and I'm just eyeballing it, that's about an eight by 10, but you can go in and put in the pixel count so it matches up exactly. And then add text and we'll do some fun text. Um, that can be a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna copy paste that and use this one for the countdown. And we'll do 150. I think we can increase the opacity. Sorry, I'm moving a little bit quick, um, but it's the same things that we've already seen. We're just double clicking on it, adjusting it, looking at it, readjusting it. Um, and then I'm going to save it and we'll see what it looks like. It probably needs some borders around it so it matches the other one a little closer. But now all of our proportions should match up. That looks like an eight by 10. And we got uh, some cool font going on. I'll go ahead and, and cancel that because I want to show you booth themes. So just like we did with the um, print template, I'm going to copy in this guy right here. Um, this is show you where I got it. Darkroomtemplates.com, and I went to free templates. I forgot which one I got. I think it was special winner, but these are already pre-configured events for different situations. This one's vertical. This one's going to take 15 images very quickly and then turn it into a GIF. Um, this uh, here's burst mode setup. This one has photo, video, and burst all in one event pre-configured. So this is a really good area to go to to look and see how something's configured. And then 
um, once you see how it's done, then you can create your own with your own style. Um, but I think I downloaded this guy right here. So we're going to drag that in right there. I'm going to go to my screens. Oops. Click on choose and see if I can find it. Photo booth with special winner. Click choose. And then I'm going to create a new event. And what it's going to do is I now have this new event with special winner already pre-configured. Um, if I go to my text menu, where is special winner? Well, uh, the the actual event is pre-configured to work with a, a special winner, I believe. It's been a while since I've used this one. Um, so it should randomly choose a winner. But the, the whole event is already pre-configured, so you can kind of look and see how it's done. I thought it was uh, text. When I upload this to YouTube, I will find out where that setting is, and I'll I'll, I'll copy over a uh, an article on how to set that up. Um, but this one is pre-configured. I just forgot where that option was. Um, do we have any questions? Animation as touch to start. Yes, you can use. Um, an animation um, you would add it to now you want to be careful whenever you use uh, animations with live view they're typically used with mirror boots um, and uh, switching the, the live view on and off because of an animation can cause issues but um, there are two different places you can add it uh, under device control in your settings, you have a track mode. Um, I don't know that I have a video with an attract mode video. Let me see if I have. But you would add it here. You'd uh, let me see. Um, um, We'll add. I don't know how well this is going to work because it's not proportioned. So that's my little man, but that's a that would be an attract mode video. So if you wanted to add um, that, that's to a very specific event. If you wanted to add it to all of. Uh, Every event, you can add it to global settings. You have the same options right over here. So attract mode, uh, and then add the video there. And we still got just a little bit more time. Uh, if anybody else has any additional questions. Boomerang. We'll have to cover Boomerang on another, uh, another session um, because that's going to take a little bit more time than we have available. But um, the uh, if you go to darkroomsupport.com, there is a a whole section on um, video Boomerang and Jeff, um, and then there's also. Um, Boomerang versus burst mode, they're the same thing, just two different words. But you can also download um, the burst mode setup. Um, anytime you use video, and this is kind of why I stayed out of the video, you have to add FM MPEG, um, 
we'll probably have to do a whole class on video topics. But um, let's check out and see if I can add it in the next couple seconds. Um, and just as a heads up, that's not my real address. <laughs> um, that's, but the, uh, let's see. Um, okay, go to downloads. We'll download it. Save. So booth screens, first mode. So this is kind of where I would start, um, add the screen template. There it is. Create a new event. And then look and see how it's configured. Uh, Oh, this one's set up set up to go to Facebook, which doesn't work anymore. I created these uh, uh, quite a few years ago. Um, okay. But now it should record a quick video. I think I have um, a memory card in my camera, which would be required. I don't know if there's a preview turned on on this one. We'll, we'll find out in just a second. So my settings are could be improved so they play back a little bit faster. So, um, but and that's all controlled by playback speed. But that, that's kind of where I would start. That one's already pre-configured. It gets you close to where you want to be, and then you adjust it um, to get exactly what you want. Where will this video recording be? Um, and this class was super dope and helpful. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I, I try to make them as, as super dope as possible. <laughs> um, the uh, It will be on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, but then it will also, uh, I think it'll probably be in like a newsletter. But if you go, uh, do a search for, um, uh, Darkroom software. We have a channel, and there's a section that has webinars um, and uh, Facebook Live events. Um, so you'll see it up probably tomorrow. Pretty sure you'll see it up tomorrow, maybe today. Okay. I hope this has been helpful. Um, and and for the next, I I don't remember what the next event is. Um, the marketing kind of ha handles that and tells me what to do. But uh, yeah, there should be some some sort of post on Facebook, on our Facebook page that talks about the next event coming up. But uh, we'll, we're gonna try to keep uh, keep these coming. And then um, if you can't make the event, no biggie, they're always uploaded to YouTube. Um, and uh, actually we're real close to 5,000 subscribers. So if you guys can subscribe, that would be cool. I've been trying to get to 5,000 for a while, but uh, I thank you all for joining me and I hope to see you next time and in all the future times. I'll see you later.